guys, welcome to day 28, and today is going to be all about databases. And so what is a database? Well, basically it stores all of our data and keeps it organized so that we can retrieve and search through it, you know, later whenever we want to. And so, pretty broad, right? Well, what could we use a database for? Think of Amazon. Amazon has lots of stuff on the internet. There are all these products you can buy, so that's probably in a database somewhere. There are a lot of users, and so, you know, their usernames, passwords, all of that, that's going to be stored somewhere. And so we are actually going to make a mini database type of sort of thing in Java, and yeah, we'll get to it. And we are going to make something that models users and how users like in Amazon may be stored in a database, what it might look like, you know, try it out. And so we are going to open NetBeans, and again, this is going to be an introduction to how databases are stored, how you would mess with them, what, how Java fits into it, stuff like that. Now, when we're creating this, and I still have my binary search tree, so we'll close that up, and we are going to create a new project. And basically, we are going to create a class that defines what a user is. And so if we go new project here, and Java application's cool, we'll put it on the desktop, and we will call it um, user. And so we're just going to create a user project. This probably wouldn't be what you call it if you're creating this huge database, but this is just an example of what you might do. And so we'll have this user, you know, thing. It'll create a class for us. There we go. And inside of this class, we have to think about what a user has. And so this class is going to be a blueprint for our user. And so we don't obviously want a bunch of user classes for all the thousands of users out there because all users are going to have the same thing. Say they're going to have a string that's a username. Cool. They're going to have a string that's a password. Great. They may have an int age. Maybe, you know, you have to be above 18 to order stuff on Amazon. And so, yeah, int age. Um, and then they are also going to have maybe a set um, of integers that are order IDs. And so we keep track of when they ordered stuff, you know, what order, how do we, you know, an order ID that basically connects their order to that person. And so this is the thing, you know, it has stuff. And so each user will have a username, a password, an age, a set of order IDs, but the values for these properties will be different because every user is different. Every user is going to have a different username, a different password, etc. And so let's create a constructor for all of this, you know, just for fun, just for a little review here. And so we'll do public user, you know, this is how we do constructors, and we'll go string and we'll say custom username. We'll go custom password, and we need to add string here. We'll go int custom, blah, 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 custom age, and then we'll have a set of integer that is the order IDs. This is our code, and let's, you know, connect it all up. So we'll do this.username equals custom username. This is our constructor. We're initializing custom password. We're initializing our user by doing this in our constructor. We're overwriting the original constructor and saying, hey, set these, let me give you some values and set these values to the values of the properties from earlier. And so this won't be custom, this will be custom about password <laughs> equals custom password. And then this dot age equals custom age, you know, setting all the values to the values of the properties. This dot order IDs equals order IDs. Blah, blah, blah. There we go. Now let's create a user. We can go down here, create a user. All is good. And the, this is our user class. Let's create a user. And first we'll create a set A, and this will be a set of, you know, order IDs. And so set is actually an interface, and so we can't initialize it. It's like our tree interface for our binary search tree. We can't, you know, initialize an interface unless um, it is implemented by class, and it is. And so we will use the class that implements set, and that is a hash set, and so we'll go new hash set. There's also like a linked list set. There are a bunch of sets out there you can use. I'm gonna use a hash set because, you know, that's easy to do, and so we'll just have this new hash set, and then we'll do a dot, we have all these methods, we'll just add one, two, one, two, cool. And then we'll actually create our new user, and so first we will import this guy. And then we will create our new user by going user Catherine, because that's me, and then we'll go new user, my username will be Blondie Bytes, and we gotta put this guy in a string, 
Blondie Bites. Password would be Hello World. That's an original. Okay, and then I will be 10 because it is the 10th anniversary of High School Musical. Yay. And then I also need my set A. And so A. Those are the orders I have ordered. Now this is nice. Now would we want to do this for every single user? Like, you join Amazon. Okay. Hi, you join Amazon. Okay. What's your name? Let me type in this code and create a new user. No, this is, this is, this is cool. This is a Java program. But what if we could make this easier to do? What if we could somehow put this in a table in a database? This is how you'd represent it in code, but how would you represent it in like a table? Well, we're gonna get to that. In a table, basically username, password, age, and the set of order IDs would be columns. In the actual user instances, like me, Catherine, as with the username Blondie Bytes, password hello world, 10 as my age, and then, you know, the set 1212 as, you know, the thing. That would be cool, that would be me. And then you could just add another row in the table when you add a new user. Pretty simple, cool. Now, these are, these are gonna be some terms for databases that are important to know. Our username would act as a primary key and so no one could have the same username as I did. And so it's something that's unique in every single row. So on Twitter, you, you know, I'm at Blondie Bites, follow, yeah. Um, no one else has that, you know, username. It's unique to me, you know. And so that's what this primary key, your Twitter username is your primary key here. Your username is your primary key. It's something no one else can have. It's unique to your row. You can also make certain columns not null in your database. For example, we know that every user should have a username, a password, and an age. However, they may or may not have ordered something yet. This means we could make the username, password, and age columns not null, requiring that they be filled with some value for every user instance for every row in the table. So I would have to have, you know, Blondie Bytes, Hello World, and 10, but I wouldn't have to have something for, you know, my table for A. Now there's something that really isn't good here. We have A set as a column in our table. This means that some users may have 10 order IDs in that set and others may have two order IDs. This is messy and we can fix this by making another table and having a foreign key reference to it. A foreign key is a column in a table that references a column of another table. Kind of confusing, but it will make sense in a minute. So in this example, we would make another table with a foreign key as one column and an order ID as the second column. How does this all match up? Well, our foreign key connecting the user table and the order ID table could be the username. For each order, there would be a row in the order ID table with the username of the user that bought it and the order ID, which could be a primary, a unique key for the order ID table. Does that make sense? So our user table would have a username column, a password column, and an age column. The order ID column wouldn't be needed because we have that primary key that connects our user table and our order ID table. We could take the value of the username, you know, in a given row, Blondie Bytes, from the user table and see if it matches with any of the usernames in the order ID table. In this case, since we deleted the order ID set column from the user, you know, table, we could have 1212 as the order ID, you know, value in the order ID table and we could have Blondie Bytes as, you know, the person that ordered it. That's the foreign key. That's what's connecting the user table and the order ID table. Now, for a given user, it may match up multiple times with the order ID table or it may not match at all. You know, some people are gonna order things, some people aren't gonna order things. This way, with the two tables, each user could have no orders or multiple orders, you know, how many they want. And the database is organized in a clean way. We aren't using extra space. It's like super awesome. The foreign key, the username, connects these two tables and allows us to reference data in the order ID table from the user table via the username, you know, Blondie Bytes. So this is the groundwork for how a database actually works and how it stores stuff. Now there's a language called SQL, which allows you to search your databases, add new tables, etc., all that stuff through simple commands. Like here, we actually have to write this initialization. We have to write, we had to write all this stuff um, in Java, but you can actually use SQL to make this a bit easier. And I'll leave resources down below for you to check that out if this kind of stuff interests you, like how stuff is stored and like that. I've told you how the system kind of works with primary keys, you know, foreign keys, you know, the columns, all of that, the tables, how it kind of connects up with our properties and what a table, so our class user was like the table, our properties were like the columns, and then the actual instances were like 
the rows, that our actual user instances that we created were the rows, and they had, each row had different values in each column, if that makes sense. So that's kind of how it's connected up. And yeah. And so that's it for this video. The Hacker Rank Challenge is down below in the description. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video. I hope you learned something and I will see you tomorrow.